We always tell our users you, you want to start off thinking about the story you want to tell. Then you can apply our tools to create it. But one staff member has access to these tools per city. They're the point person. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So these nine parcels we have here are generating a total of 190 units, housing 350 people. We found a way to fit another 5,000 units into the city. How do they convey that? A virtual reality setting where you have a controller and you can walk through a plan and understand what it would be like as it is fully developed. I'm Robin Frankie. I'm a solution engineer on Esri's Smart City Solutions team. We're finding suitable capacity for housing. Helper helps find parcels, business analyst, putting in your preferences for suitability, urban viewer, the form of mm -hmm. what's going into each parcel. Right now, how many units are being generated? What is it going to look like for community engagement purposes for the public outreach portion of the housing element? I'm going to go through a walkthrough on how to identify potential sites for a housing element using suitability analysis to rank those sites on a set criteria, and then develop those sites to understand the capacity and how many units can be generated. Through the regional data platform, member agencies get one account for ESRI tools that they can access. Every SCAG member agency can access Business Analyst and ArcGIS Urban. Some planning departments have GIS analysts that works specifically for community development, and sometimes it will be the GIS analyst. And it is one user per city. But one staff member has access to these tools. A GIS joke, they're the point person. <laughs> this is the Helper app, a regional data platform solution. For general public. Specifically for sites inventory portion of the housing element. It's a parcelized data set for the entire region of SCAG. It might be helpful for determining which sites are more suitable for redevelopment than others. Helper is the very first step and is to help do the initial screening and narrow down the sites that we want to analyze more. For this example, we'll use Redlands. 5.1 million is the total num number of parcels within the SCAG region, and once you choose a filter or a city, then it will reduce to the number of parcels within the city. And our map will generate the land use designation that will be able to select a parcel. The land use code, the city's current zoning code, the SCAG zoning code on HCD's opportunity scores to screen parcels that would be more suitable for development using these filters on the left-hand side. SCAG has created preset filters and they're different category. Here is vacant parcels of appropriate size, commercial, retail, potential infill of parcels that are commercial or retail designated. Turn on that commercial, retail, potential infill filter. We'll see the number drop. A variety of parcels were canceled out and now we only have a handful left, reduced to 164. And we can add multiple filters for our parcel selection, but they are preset just by default. So have something to work with. I wanted to add inside priority growth area, outside constraint area, turn that on. Our number will reduce to 18 parcels. So let's say for city planning, if they wanted to look at only commercial retail sites to do infill development, and they wanted to make sure that they're in priority growth areas for the region, for a density bonus, let's say, and outside of um, constraint areas for the region, they would be left with 18 initial parcels that have been initially screened by the helper app to get a better idea of the existing conditions of the parcels. So if we can zoom in, we can see a lot of it is surface parking lot for these commercial uses. We'll say they have potential, right? But it doesn't show us how they compare. That is something that we can use business analyst for. You can download either a shape file of the selected parcels and the CSV information. A zipped folder downloaded to my computer. Open up business analyst on another tab here, and you can click add data and import the file directly that was downloaded. Business analyst already has information from census data, ACS data, even business and facility information. So we have just a list of 18 parcels that were screened, but we don't know which ones might be more suitable than others. With the demographic data, score our parcels, not 
polygon to a point layer for us to analyze and click run analysis. And we want to do a suitability analysis. And we'll click start with features on map, create buffers around the points, applied that five minute walk shed on each of our points using the actual street network. And now we can add our criteria already existing on the parcel level, like add attributes from sites, all of the information located on the parcel. Look at three different attributes to add. Unbuilt square footage, a grocery stores within one mile, healthcare facilities within one mile. Being close to healthcare and grocery stores makes a site more suitable. We'll see our criteria has been set. See the information as a point. The higher the score, the better the parcel is. I'll go ahead and change the ranking color to dark green. Business analysts will automatically weight each of the criteria equally. The parcel that has the most unbuilt square footage, we can weight that at 60%. This parcel has deemed to be the most suitable given our criteria. We have about six different criteria added that are scoring our parcels. So ironically, these are parking lots. The next step is to take that parcel data set with the final score attribute and bring it into ArcGIS Urban. The 3D web-based scenario planning tool, apply building types onto parcels and generate capacity metrics. So when you export, it creates a feature layer. And then we can bring that feature layer into ArcGIS Urban, extension of ArcGIS Online. Uh, ArcGIS Urban, it's, this is digital twins. It's, this is sort of your sim city of your city. Are there cities in the US that use this tool currently? The city of Boulder is currently doing that for one of their specific plan city of fullerton as well they can create plans and develop new building types and new block typologies and understand how tall they are you can see all of our teen parcels right now i'm in a plan a zoning plan for redlands and we're taking that final score from business analyst let's say we only want to look at parcel in the middle versus highly suitable. So we have nine parcels that have been chosen. Go ahead and allocate building types or different building types to the selection. 45 different building types generated and applied those building types to our parcels. Given the city's zoning parameters, auto assign them. So 33% will be low rise residential with retail. It's just maxing out the density based code. So these nine parcels we have here are generating a total of 190 units, housing 350 people. And I have this parcel selected, right? I can go ahead and turn on the zoning envelope. Maximum buildable area, that transparent box, right? That is the zoning envelope. I can choose to change that as well. So draw to fit the new zoning parameters and the new building type. This is essentially where they would be and how tall they would be to generate the amount of units that we're looking for. Let's say the planners like said, hey, we found a way to fit another 5,000 units into the city. How do they convey that? Essentially, you can create a plan in urban and bring that into a virtual reality setting where you have a controller and you can walk through a plan and understand what it would be like as it is fully developed. Now we're looking at a zoning plan for Fullerton's rail district. They actually developed their parcels with different building types. We have the ability to generate shadows at different times of the day, apply different textures, streetscape, share this link to the public, or embed our urban model into a website. For scenarios, right? So you can compare one scenario versus another, have different densities, different zoning requirements, different building designs or structures. That's the purpose of Urban. Can you skip business analysts, go straight from helper, and then add the capacity to that? Yeah, of course. We always tell our users, you, you want to start off thinking about the story you want to tell, right? And when you have the story or the project in mind, then you can apply our tools to create it. Always propose a meeting after the initial onboarding meeting if they want to meet. About half have requested, the other half we haven't heard from. We are continuing to engage with those that haven't requested yet. Awesome. Well, Robin, thanks again for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.